Astronaut and Waterbury native Rick Mastracchio is a veteran of three space shuttle flights that helped build and supply the International Space Station. He will launch to the station again for a nearly six-month mission on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft next month. Mastracchio joined us for an interview via satellite from Star City, Russia this week, and we asked some Waterbury Elementary students to supply the questions. What inspired you to be an astronaut, and what did you learn while in Waterbury Public Schools that helped prepare you to be an astronaut? Well, I can remember, I went to Chase Grammar School a few years back, and I can remember when I was, was there, I loved when my teachers were talking about the planets and, and, and anything related to science. I, was also, I also enjoyed math, believe it or not. So I think just my interest in math and my love of science and studying the planets just uh, naturally, naturally led for me to to become an engineer, and then I was lucky enough to get selected as an astronaut after a lot of hard work. What has been the most challenging part of preparing for your six-month expedition? Yeah, that, that's a good question. You know, training to fly a spacecraft is obviously quite difficult, but it was, uh, it was also very exciting for me to learn how to fly a new vehicle. But the most challenging part was probably the fact that I had to learn how to speak and understand the Russian language. It's a, it's a difficult language, and uh, you know, being an engineer, I'm not real good at languages, but uh, I was able to, uh, uh, to master it and got through all that. How do you drink liquid in space without gravity? Is there a special type of food you have to eat in space? Well, to drink flu, uh, to drink uh, water or juices or things like that, uh, probably a lot of the kids are familiar with the uh, kind of the uh, the drink packets in the in the uh, in the envelopes where you just poke a straw in it and drink the uh, and drink the water or the juice out of the uh, the plastic bag, if you will. That's what we use in space. It's very similar to things you could buy at the grocery store here. And in terms of space food, the space station has a wide variety of food, and it's all very tasty, actually. Uh, but of course, I can't go anywhere without uh, my peanut butter, so I got to have a peanut butter sandwich when I'm up there. But unfortunately, we don't have bread, so we use tortillas. And while many of his colleagues are leaving the space agency, Mistracchio says he has no plans to leave after his mission concludes in March. I Once in a while, I have a thought about the future, but I don't plan on leaving NASA. I plan, I, uh, right now, I plan on sticking around after this mission, and I think it's going to be some exciting times with some of these new vehicles coming online, and I'd, I'd like to be part of that. Those new vehicles include the NASA SLS and Orion spacecraft that will go beyond low Earth orbit, but also commercial spacecraft by SpaceX, Boeing, and others. Uh, I think it's great. It's great to have the, uh, the U.S. companies building spacecraft and delivering cargo to the International Space Station. Of course, the next step is to start delivering people to the space station or to low Earth orbit and wherever that may lead. I think it's great. I look forward to, when I get back from this mission, work, working with the commercial companies or working on NASA's uh, new Orion vehicle in some way. Mastracchio says he plans to return to Connecticut following his mission's completion in March. One of the activities will be returning a geocaching travel bug that Waterbury students gave him for his flight. A special thank you to the Waterbury Police Activity League for lining up the students' questions. For CTTechJunkie.com, this is Lon Seidman.